right, thank you very much for staying with us. Let's uh, settle down for the big one, which has to do with the National Petroleum Authority. So what we know is that the new chief executive officer of the National Petroleum Authority, Hassan Tampuli, has reminded staff of the entity that the NPA is an authority with a strategic mandate to ensure quality petroleum products. He made the statement when he familiarized himself uh, and took a tour of the facility uh, earlier in the week. MPA is an authority with a very strategic mandate that will ensure the safety and security of our nation, individuals, and even our property. Some of the stories about explosions of gas stations and, and, and stuff like that are matters which are brought squarely at the doorsteps of MPA. Hassan Tampuli indicated that staff of NPA have the experience and expertise suitable to work anywhere. I come here not with any superior knowledge of the regulation of the downstream petroleum sector. I do not pretend to be an expert. I come with the vision of the president to help shape out the direction of the authority. Our vision in the short term, as far as the petroleum sector is concerned, is to make sure that the vehicles are on the road. In other words, we need products to be in circulation and they must be of the highest quality. And uh, as far as the power sector is also concerned, to keep the lights on. That is the vision of the, of the president as far as the energy sector is concerned. He urged the workers to do all they can within the limits of the law to achieve the vision of the president. All right, so we would want to find out uh, what the NPA's role has been in the last few years. And then also, with the appointment of a new chief executive officer, uh, what should the expectations be from him, especially from the staff and then Ghanaians uh, as a whole? Generally, the role the NPA has been playing over the years, what are the strategies he would want to look at if he takes office or he has taken office already? What should expectations be? We've been joined in studio by uh, someone who has followed such developments for quite some time, the executive secretary of the uh, chamber of uh, um, the executive... All right, so let me just introduce Dan Kanamu and then we'll go straight into the interview. Dan Kanamu, thank you very much for... Uh, you are with COPEC. I mean, clearly, the, 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 what the consumers want is almost always uh, you know, very much of a burden on your heart because you would want, rather get the consumer to be more satisfied and not be fleeced by government or any other uh, petroleum institution. And as against some technical challenges that we face every now and then, what are your initial uh, impressions about the new CEO? I mean, is he known to be someone in the industry? Um, let me say a big thank you again. Uh, good evening to your cherished viewers. Uh, indeed, uh, the petroleum downstream is fraught with a lot of challenges. Uh, just this week, we were fighting about the uh, issue of pricing and uh, as to whether the NPA will be firm mm. uh, to even insist in a deregulated market that uh, there are certain parameters that we cannot allow the consumer uh, to be overburdened with. Uh, that's the job of the regulator. Okay. But oftentimes, uh, civil society would have to even, uh, I mean, do that kind of advocacy to get certain things done. Is, is, it uh, that, is it that the NPA sometimes overlooks some of these things, for which reason the likes of your outfit seem to always calling on them and shouting at the rooftop that they should pay attention to what is happening in the industry. You see, Martin, the, the, there's always a difficult path between what is legal and what is right. Uh, if you take an authority like the NPA, they would most times want to do uh, what is legally, mm. I mean, uh, accepted. But uh, if you do everything legal and you don't do what is right, <laughs> uh, most times you squeeze the people in between. That's why we are caught uh, between uh, what the law says mm. and the application of the law as to whether the application would be to the benefit of the, the collective or the, the, the yeah. public. Okay. And so we would expect Mr. Tampuli uh, to do three things, uh, essentially. Uh, the first one being issue of standards. Uh, if you recall last year, there was a big fight in Ghana about diesel and uh, uh, sulfur mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we came to the issue of petrol 
and uh, benzene, aromatics, and all other substances found in our products, yes. we would want to see an MPA like he has suggested already that is focused on delivering very quality uh, uh, premium products okay. to the Ghanaian market. But and certainly that will come at higher price. I mean, no. so the consumer should just be made it, aware that it, if you want high quality, <laughs> you should just brace yourself Martin, for, for this. The interesting thing about costs with quality is, as I've indicated, the United States today is doing fuel at 0 0.68 dollars per liter. Ghana mm. is doing uh, sulfur so high and everything so bad. We are doing 0 0.96, 0 0.96, 0 0.68. So we are taking dirty so content and even paying even more even for we are, it. we are paying more for dirty. Okay. So if it is the focus of the NPA, we are quite certain that in no time, mm. uh, cost will not be the key issue, but safety of one, our engine, safety of the environment, safety of public health. Uh, we would all be able to go to sleep knowing that uh, my brother Tampuli uh, mm -hmm. has taken the mantle and is indeed uh, 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 um, focused on delivering. Then again, you come to the second issue uh, of monitoring. Mm -hmm. In fact, Martin, if you take the explosions that have occurred over the period, uh, some of them could have been prevented right. if monitoring was efficient and effective. Don't only go looking for quality products, but also ensure that the stations themselves have a minimum standard, safety well, what standards. Can, what, what can he do? He's just, he, well, certainly he, as the regulator, can ensure that the laws are binding on everybody. In the, in the first place, we recall that the previous administration went from filling station to filling station, checking their documents and ensuring that the safety standards are adhered to. Is it? How, how does that play into the is role of the NPA? Martin, safety is not an event that happens once and then it is done. It is a process. So you go today, the same stations whose pumps today were very healthy, a month later, they may develop some leakages mm. here and there. So it's something that you should be doing, I mean, regularly. regularly. And so we would want to see NPA staff every now and then at filling stations checking mm. minimum safety standards to ensure that even if there's a spark, you know, uh, a naked flame, uh, there's no danger to any of us because you wouldn't find uh, that mm. much, you know, okay. to cause any uh, okay. whatever. So we are saying, secondly, he would have to ensure that the, the minimum standards that w w would all require to be safe around mm. filling stations, mm. the NPA should step up its game. Okay. And so, much higher. So, I mean, if, if you're just joining us, this is News at 10. And mm. what we are doing this evening is that we know that a new uh, chief executive has been named for the National Petroleum Authority. Uh, also, the Tema Oil Refinery has a new chief executive officer. We just want to put it in perspective. What should expectations of the consumer be, the expectation of the workers there? And then also, what are the first key steps or key things that the new chief executive should look at? One of the advocate uh, institutions in the country, I mean, known over the years, that's the, um, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, they are saying that three key things stand out for them. One has to do with the fact that he must be sure that although you are implementing the law, you are also considering the consumer. So you just, just use the law to, you and know, squeeze, squeeze them. And them. then also issues of safety yes. at almost every uh, filling station. station. And, uh, and These see, are Ma Martin, primary. To even add a little to the safety, mm. uh, there's this proposal that every fuel station across the country should have some minimum insurance. Minimum. Okay. Uh, not only insurance for the station's uh, properties, but lives that, you know, workers who in come there, around. people who come around. So that when, uh, in the case of an unforeseen uh, 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 disaster, the station itself could be able to even pay for medical costs and all of those things that the government has often had to step in for, mm. you know. Mm. So okay. we would be praying uh, our brother Hassan uh, to look at some of these issues. And mm. then again, Martin, one other thing that is dear to every Ghanaian is the issue of price. Right. And so uh, we could do everything right, but if fuel prices continue to rise the way they are rising, uh, it becomes it's quite be unbearable. Mm. It, it, so... He should also look at the price build-up. How much of an influence does he have on the general pricing if the deciding factor is global? Uh, it is not always global, Martin. Um, the NPA would work uh, with the petroleum service providers to develop a pricing uh, build-up. And so the pricing build-up, like I can uh, confirm, 
some margins every now and then. The operators would negotiate with the NPA who mm. want an increase. And it's the NPA's duty uh, to grant or allow those uh, increases. As you increase OMC margins, uh, you're only increasing <laughs> it at the expense of my pocket. Right. And sometimes we would want to see uh, our brother Tampuli uh, dialogue a lot more. Not only with the petroleum service providers, but mm. with those of us at the other end okay. who would have okay. to cough up the, the persuades, the cities to pay for so those things. So that, you know, in the end, we would all go to bed believing that the mm. authority, uh, unlike uh, had been previously, today, if there has to be even a persua extra on fuel products, uh, all of us are, are, are Okay, told. and my last question then would be, what is maybe the number one challenge you foresee he might have faced? Um, as we speak, uh, I thought we we're dealing with uh, the tour issue as well, but maybe okay. on another platform. Yes. Um, the petroleum downstream is fraught with a lot of challenges, like I've indicated. One of the challenges today happens to be with pricing. And like you indicated, it's a delicate issue. Mm -hmm. Finance ministry will have to come in, the Minister of Petroleum will have to come in, but MPA will still play a role in there. Okay. We would want to see our brother champion some of these issues. Mm. Uh, sometimes where he even disagrees with his own government uh, as a way of saying that as an authority we would want to protect uh, the back end a lot more than to protect then, the government. Okay. We would want to see him uh, uh, champion our Before, issues before you us. leave though, you mentioned the issue of tour and I think that it will be interesting to just you know, touch briefly on it. We know that former uh, ambassador to uh, the US, Isaac Osei, is the new chief executive of tour. What are your expectations from him and what do you think he can do to transform the tour that we know over the years? In fact, we have a simple advice to the government. We wouldn't hide away from this any day. Let the government uh, delink a tour and bust. Okay. We would want to see a refinery stand as a separate entity. If bust would have to go back into a storage uh, 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 facility mm. so that if Tor can refine and give products to Bost so that we also have a storage uh, facility that is working, uh, that should be. But we want to see a Tor that is profitable. We <laughs> want to see a refinery that does not depend on eight pesos from my sweat Monday to, to Monday to be able to pay off its debt. We would want to see a, a comprehensive program from the you, be able to deal, you think you'll be able to deal with the tour levy, the, the debt? Um, the you see, businesses across the world, I have indicated that if tour is allowed to work, if the government can inject in some capital mm. and say, look, do your tolling, right? If okay. you do one million barrels and you are doing even seven dollars, I mean, a barrel, that is about seven million dollars. And so if within two, three months you can raise seven million dollars, I'm sure at some point tour will be so liquid I will be able to stand. But unfortunately, over the period, uh, you only hear of tall making losses. Mm. We want to mm. see a comprehensive program uh, from the Honorable Isaac Osei okay. uh, in dealing with the oil <laughs> refinery for all of us to all right. heave some relief. Eight pesos must go, Martin. Must be scrapped off. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the Executive Secretary of COPEC, that is the uh, Chamber for Pet Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, Duncan Amwa, for your time. It's always a pleasure having you uh, with us. So